Hey everyone, welcome back to my ministry. I'm your host, Nurse Alois. I wanted to make sure um, that I keep my promise and come um, before the world and uh, talk about um, conversation um, and some instructions that God gave me today, April the 1st, 2024. So, um, you know, I have been walking with God for over 40 years, right? And um, in my walk with God, um, I have learned to be obedient, uh, to live right, um, to listen to God when he's given me warnings. And I share some of, um, you know, some examples of things that God has walked me through with great deliverance um, to protect um, me, my family, in um, a lot of people and so I want to start off by uh, talking about what God spoke to my spirit uh, this morning he spoke verbally to me gave me specific um, instructions about things that are going to take place uh, in the earth so um, I told you guys before you know, God has always given me instructions ever since I started walking with him. He's always given me instructions. I receive the instructions and then I get up and I just obey God. Um, he doesn't always tell me all the pieces to the puzzle. Like he'll give me one set of instructions. Then I get up. I obey God. And then in my obedience, I find out why he gave me that you know one part of you know set of instructions i mean some of the things i've gone through i think if god would have told me everything up front i would have been like wait a minute wait wait a minute god oh hold your horses but he doesn't do me like that he you know he gives me one set of instructions i get up i obey god and then i find out why i have to do something but this morning, God was really clear about some, you know, things that are going to take place uh, in the earth. You know, he doesn't want his children fretting or being fearful. But when we see a whole bunch of craziness going on in the earth, like it's going on now, it's going to ramp up to another crazy uh, level. And so, you know, you know, God always prepares us for what is going to take place uh, in the earth. And he ministered to my heart today and he spoke these words to me. He told me that um, because my heart is in alignment uh, to his will and to his word, you know, that uh, is a part of, you know, having the covenant of protection with God and walking in the promises um, of God, I can tell you that uh, before the plague hit the earth, God had already given my family and myself instructions two years prior uh, to not do certain things. He told us not to do certain things. Um, he gave me specific instructions that I cannot say on social media. And that's why I'm such a strong proponent when I get on my social media platform. I keep telling you guys to go to God in prayer because he'll protect you from the traps. The traps of the world, traps of the enemy. Okay? And so, um, you know, this morning God, he was just telling me, tell my people. Tell my people. And I'm telling his people. Keep your heart pure before the Lord. There are going to be some things that take place in the earth. Um, doesn't it's just gonna look crazy y'all and when it happens god wants you protected walking in his covenant walking in a pure heart you know just like uh when god looked down at noah he looked at noah's heart and he saw that noah was the only one the only one on the earth who had a pure heart before the lord uh before our father god and god gave Noah some instructions here we go again with the instructions to build the ark and bring in you know you know the animals and all of that so that you know the earth can uh, repopulate 
So Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives, um, you know, went into the ark and God protect them. God does me the same way. Uh, he just protects me and I listen for his warnings. I listen for God's warnings. And so, you know, we're not supposed to walk around fearful or anything like that, but God always prepares our heart for what is going to take place um, in the earth. And it's all linked to how people are living, sin, you know, when the sin fills up in the earth, the earth begins to um, react to sin. Um, and, you know, it's, it's gotten book wild out here now. It's just some crazy stuff going on out here now. So, you know, keep your house in order. Uh, make sure you are living right, doing what you're, you are supposed to do. And when God gives you instructions, follow those instructions. I know this morning God was telling me um, there are going to be times he's going to tell me not to go outside. So I don't know what's going to be happening with the outside. I don't know if it has something to do with something in the air. I don't know yet because it hasn't happened yet. Whatever it is, God told me there's going to be times he's going to tell me, don't even go outside. And so I told God, I said, um, okay. And he told me to tell my children, my, my four children, that he's going to have a personal conversation with them and give them instructions on what to do when they see certain things take place uh, in earth. All of my children can hear from God. I train them as little children how to hear from God. So with that being said, I'm going to share some examples of some other warnings that God um, has given uh, to me um, in my 40 plus years of uh, just walking with the Lord. Um, it's not all of the examples, but just, you know, some um some examples i remember uh one time just being in the house and my children were at school and just out of nowhere god just told me to get up and go to the school and i had no idea why i mean again you know he doesn't always tell me um everything he's god and he can say it however he want to say it i just say yes sir i don't even question god i don't even say stuff like well, God, why you want me to go? I just don't even do that. He's in charge. I know that. I just get my hips up and I go, right? So here I go. You know, I'm going into the school. I'm walking in the hall. I still don't know. God ain't said nothing. I don't even know why I'm even there. So I just go into the office. I don't even know why I'm in the office, y'all. I'm just in the office, right? And I'm just standing at the office waiting on someone to come to me, right? And I see this black man walk, you know, up to the desk. And then he was by a, um, he was by the counter. And as soon as the man start walking away, the Holy Ghost said, child molester. I was like, mm, okay. So I found out his name. He was a parent helper. Went to the police, reported him. They did some uh investigation on him he had a rap sheet y'all he had a rap sheet he was a child molester i didn't know that until god told me god didn't want him in the school he had no business there and i just wanted to whoop the principal for not doing a background check on the on the parents you know what i'm saying and so that's an example um i remember one time being at another elementary school with my youngest daughter when she was in kindergarten and um, I was at a uh, meeting with all of the parents in the gymnasium and as I was seated the Holy Spirit was letting me know um, that something was going to happen with the school with some a child being abducted so you know I asked the I raised my hand I had a question I asked the principal does the school have you know plans in place in case a child gets abducted i mean she just rolled her eyes at me thought it was the most ridiculous question y'all was just being obedient to the lord okay the next day when the principal saw me walk up 
the sidewalk getting ready to drop my daughter off at school she grabbed me in a frantic fearful way and she asked me to stand outside and to watch help her watch the children because some a child was just uh there was an attempt to abduct a child off her school property well god was trying to warn the crazy lady when I was there, you know, a lot of people don't understand when God lives inside of people, he, he knows what's going on. He's inside of us. God knows what's going on, what's getting ready to happen, right? And so, you know, uh, the attempt failed. The police were called and they were on the scene. So that's another warning. You know, God always gives us warnings. We just have to you know, pay attention uh, to the warnings of God. God gives me warnings of my enemies. Um, I might not tell my enemies I know they're my enemy, you know, because it might be a reason why I have to be somewhat around them. Um, I know I know who do, does witchcraft. God will show me people doing witchcraft. God will show me exactly uh, what they're doing. I remember... Uh, one time being in church, helping um, a man of God and his wife build their church, because God will do that with me. He'll ask me to go help churches build, you know, build their church. And I was helping this one ministry, and I, I saw many witches. I saw some warlocks. I could see in the spirit what they their apparatus like what they did their witchcraft stuff with i could see who did astral projection i could see all that kind of stuff so the lord will show me all that kind of stuff because i'm a seer i'm a woman of god um and i call that stuff out um at the altar so i remember um this one particular young woman she she was a witch um, she came down the altar, the pastor gave me the mic, and I just called out what she was doing. Because, you know, if a witch comes to church, if warlocks come to church, and they're not coming to get delivered, they're coming for something else. And you have to have discernment to know who's around you. And they think they're in disguise, but they're not disguised from seers. You know, we can see. We can see who, who you are and what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Now, I can only see what God shows me, but I can see it. I remember one time um, I was at this church, the same church, helping this one pastor and his wife. And I think I counted, I counted three witches. I was like, wow, one, two, three, three witches. And... Uh, after church service, the pastor was having a, a meeting with, you know, the ministers on staff. And he was asking me, he says, how many of the ministers, you know, how many of y'all saw, you know, the witches? And I raised my hand. And I said, I, I, said, I saw three witches. He said, uh-uh, Lois, there were two. I said, no, it wasn't pastor, it was three. And so he, we was going back and forth. He was like, no, Lois, it was two. I said, Pastor, I'm sorry. There was three. I know when I see three witches, right? It was three witches. I ain't going to just say it was two if it was three. And so went on. The pastor changed the subject. Later on that night, the pastor's wife called me. And she said, Lois, she said there were three. She said the third one was his mother. She's off into, you know, um, um, the female masons, you know what I'm saying? And, she, you know, they do rituals and stuff like that to be in that uh, organization. And she came to, to church to support her son. But I, the Lord showed me she was a witch. And she said, Lord, what God showed you was true. She was the third witch. She, she said her husband just didn't want to admit that his mama was a witch i mean hey it is what it is but you know god warns me because i you know i don't be playing around with the witches to be doing witchcraft and stuff like that and so you know i always stay prayed up word up because you know they be working their little witchcraft stuff and you know i have to 
be a certain way um, in the realm of the spirit to deal with all that witchcraft stuff that people be playing around with. You know what I'm saying? Of course, no weapon for and against me shall prosper, but I, you know, I, I deal... I deal with the witches and the warlocks and, and all of that. They they don't, um, I can see them. I can see them in the realm of the spirit. So God gives me warnings um, that way to know who's around me. It could be anywhere. It could be wherever I am. If, if, if they're a witch, they're a witch. God will let me know it. I might not say anything to them depending on the environment I'm in. Um, but if it's in a church set at setting and we're at the altar, I'll grab the mic and call out witchcraft. I'll call sin out. Let people know. And I can see exactly what you're doing. I told this one witch, you burn candles. I see your candles underneath the bed. You pull the candles out and you burn candles and you cast spells on people. So, you know, God gives me those type of warnings. Um, I remember years ago, um, in my house, minding my own business. And when I walked past one of the windows in my house, Oh my goodness, I had this, ooh, this eerie feeling uh, inside of my spirit. I was like, oh God, what was that? I said, Holy Spirit, what was that? And it was such a strong inner warning, you know. And um, I went to the window, y'all. I investigated the window. I hit on it, make sure it was secure and closed and everything. And it, it was closed. It was secure. So I just said, okay. I, I brought my children around me. They were like 10 and 8 at the time. I had a toddler. Toddler couldn't touch. He didn't, toddler wasn't even uh, tall enough to touch the window. But I told my 10-year-old and my 8-year-old, I said, God said, don't touch this window. Somebody must be trying to do something, get in that window, be around that window. God said, uh, don't play with this window. And it's like, okay, mommy, okay, mommy. You know what, that kid stuff, right? And I remember my mother was in the house with me. She had just received a new position. She was staying with me because um, my basement, you know, is completely finished. And she is like a, another apartment down there, you know, on, you know, uh, living areas, sp living space areas, stove, all that, right? And uh, bathroom, all that, and uh, shower, everything. And so she was, she, that's her space. She wanted to be down there. I'm like, cool. And then, you know, uh, she stayed uh, with me. She was watching uh, my children that night. And I happened to go out with a great good friend to hear Maddie Moss Clark, the Clark sister's mother, uh, in a gospel um, concert. And um, up at Greater Grace Temple. And um, it was a, a, like an evening service. And I remember checking the window before I left, y'all. And it was still secure and everything. And I uh, went on with my friend. And I remember being in church. And God putting it on my heart to give a little bit more in the offering. And, you know, I was even obedient with that. I gave a little bit more in the offering, right? Not knowing I'm about to save my own life and the life of my family, right? You know, it's, it's very important just to obey God. Whatever he tell you to do, just do what God tell you to do. Even if you don't understand why, just do it. Don't even ask no question. Just do it. And so, I remember coming back home. It was really, really hot. You know, um, you know I have central air now. But back then, at that time, it was years ago. Um, I didn't have central air yet, and you know, I have a brick home. And so, you know, brick homes in the summertime, they hold in a lot of heat. And it was just really, really hot that day and that evening. And I just remember, you know, just in my underclothes, just laying down on the couch, just trying to, you know, get a catch a breeze, just, you know, be comfortable. And my toddler was laying right next to me in the love seat. You know, I just didn't feel like going to bed. And I remember going to sleep on the couch with the television on. But when I woke up, I woke up to heavy footsteps uh, in my house. And I knew I was in trouble. I, at first, I called out my children's name, but my children usually sleep during the night. And I looked to the side. My toddler was sleep, conked out sleep. 
and uh, my mother, oh my goodness, my mother sleeps. She slept so hard. Oh my goodness, she just slept so hard. But uh, everybody was asleep. And then I saw a man come around the corner of my um, uh, dining room into the living room where I was laying down on the couch. But I was sitting up at that time because I heard the footsteps. And then my eyes had to... Um, adjust to the dark right so then I could start seeing stuff shadows and movement the TV was turned off and um, the man saw me and I knew I was in trouble now the saints are old you know like the Bible tells you you know like the older women teach the younger women God has always placed the older women over my life you know when I was in my 20s and my 30s he always gave me like an older woman in the in the church to to shepherd me to 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 bless me to school me and this one particular older woman used to say if you ever baby if you ever get in trouble call on the name of the lord there's power in his name she would just like you know out of nowhere just drop nuggets uh into my spirit and I, and i never forgot that i'm like she's saying it for a reason that's that's god talking to that older woman she's just she's telling me to always call on the name of the lord because there's power in the name of jesus right and so when i got in trouble and that man was in my house i remember what that woman that older woman said to me and i screamed the name of jesus it was like a shivering screal screech really loud you know what i'm saying i was surprised that there was like no movement uh in the house my toddler didn't wake up my mother didn't wake up my mom sounds she she sleeps sound anyway uh there was like no movement with my two children you know upstairs on another level and so the man came at me and uh, he put his hand around my mouth like that. And then he started pushing me down, my head down in the corner of the couch. And uh, the Holy Ghost told me inside my spirit, he said, call on the name of the Lord again. Jesus! That's how I did it. And the Holy Ghost inched his way up through my body, out my throat. I could feel it like a volcano. And he took his time and he inched his way up. And then at that moment, I started thinking about what was happening on the inside of my body. But the Holy Ghost inching his way up and out of my mouth came the force of God, the power of God. Knock that man a foot away from me. The man got up. He was trying to figure out what in the world is going on here. I listen. I called on the name of the Lord. The power hit that man again on the knees. He fell. He fell on his knees. And um, he just got up and he walked out the house. I was trying to figure out, you know, where is he going and which way is he going? I was getting ready to go to my um, uh, front door, but I didn't want to leave my baby. I didn't want to leave my mama in the basement. I didn't want to leave my two children um, upstairs. I'm like thinking, God, what am I going to do? And the Holy Spirit said, just be still. And I, I was still, looked out the window. I saw the man right down my driveway on a 10-speed bike. So then I knew he was gone. I went and turned on all the lights of the house, went to the window that God told me to, to, to that he warned me about. And that was the window that God had given me a warning about. It was that very window. But when I looked at it, um, it wasn't broken into, I mean, nothing. I was like trying to figure out how did he get in. And then come to find out my uh, eight-year-old, she was playing with the window after I warned her not to play with the window and she left it open. Chad could have took all of us up out of here. But God, uh, he protected us. He protected everybody uh, in the house. Nobody was killed. Nobody was assaulted. No, Nothing bad happened to anybody uh, in the house. And I learned a lot about 
the Holy Ghost. You know, I learned a lot about how much power was inside of me. Um, and I remember God saying to me after the police came and did a police report, he said, uh, now you go tell what great things your God has done for you. And I tell, I tell women all the time, if you are around an abuser and you're about to get your butt kicked, call on the name of the Lord. God will get your abuser up off of you, okay? Uh, if you're in any kind of trouble, I don't know, I don't care what it is, don't forget to call on the name of of the Lord, you call out the name of Jesus. And as soon as you call on the name of Jesus, power is released in the atmosphere to bring deliverance and, and to uh, to help you, okay? So, yeah, um, that has happened. And again, you know, God gave me a warning. You warned me. You warned me about that window. And I'm so glad when I went to uh, the, the gospel church that I, Oh, obey God, gave that extra offering. I mean, the whole, everything was an act of obedience. Uh, receiving the warning of God, telling my children not to play with the darn window in the first place. Um, you know, God telling me to give an extra offering uh, in, in, the, in the musical uh, concert. I mean, it was all just an act of obedience and and, you know, God, you know, protecting me, protecting um, uh, the family. So that's another um, example. I remember another time where God gave me a warning. Um, and I was trying to figure out if I should say this one or not. I don't think I'm going to say this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something else. I remember another time God gave me a warning. I was uh, taking my children to school. You know, we were in um, my vehicle. And I happened to notice a man, you know, that I've never seen before, just start, you know, talking to the children as they were walking to school. Not my children, but just, you know, neighborhood children as they were walking to school. And I monitored that. I watched that. I made sure the kids didn't get, you know, snatched up and stuff like that. And... When I got to the school, I asked the principal, I said, hey, can you print out some flyers? You know, let the parents know um, that they need to watch their children. They need to find a better way to parent their children. They can't just run off and go to work and let the poor children fend for themselves. They got to come up with a better plan of how to, you know, protect the children. They need to know that somebody's out there talking to their children. And so I'm thinking the, you know, principal going to do the right thing. She did not send out any news flyers. I was looking all through my children's book bags and everything, right? I was so furious with her. The next day, that crazy man made his way to the school. He went into my son's classroom went to the road behind my son, snatched up a little boy and started dragging the little boy out. It took two men at that school to jump on that man to get the man off the little boy. Do you hear me? Y'all, I was so upset. I was so mad because I, I asked the principal, you know, even if you didn't believe what I was saying, just out of caution, why didn't you warn the parents the news came and everything television news came and i was just so just done with that that nonsense i i learned that a lot of these schools they really don't care about you know about these kids y'all so that's another um situation you know uh that god has warned me about god has always given me warnings gives me warnings about people i could walk in a room and feel people's vibes i know when i'm around a good person i know when i'm around a bad person because god let me know because because he's inside of me um i know in this season that i'm in now uh god is pulling me away even more uh away from people 
to stay focused in on things that are going to be taking place in the earth uh, so I can hear him clear and, uh, you know, send out these warnings uh, to his people. You know, my circle is small anyway. I don't have a lot of people uh, in my circle besides close family and friends, okay? Um, even with that, you know, God will shut me in even a little bit more even with that because he's, he's talking to me about some things that are getting ready to take place in the earth and he wants his people ready uh, he wants me he wants my family you know ready and so you know God is just he's faithful he is just so faithful uh, to his people. I remember another warning God gave me. And I shared this testimony uh, before. And it was with my oldest son. Uh, you know, my oldest son is bright. Oh, my goodness. he was His mind is just so sharp. And, you know, he went to two high schools. He went to, he went to accelerated classes in high school. And then he went off to technical school, uh, high school. So he went to two high schools um, in a day. And so I would drop him off at his regular high school. And I would tell him to get his hind parts on the Voltec school bus. Where the bus driver has years of experience with driving a school bus. To take you to your second high school. He knows the rules. I've been telling him that. And so, you know, when they, when your children get to be teenagers and stuff, they get a certain age. You know, there's certain things you don't have to say to them a lot. I mean, they, they know by now. They know the drill. One day out the blue, I had this warning, y'all, on the inside of me. And I just said to my son, I said, I know you know this because, you know, there's nothing's changed, but get on the Voltec bus. Don't you take your tail and get in the car with them teenagers. I said, you're my responsibility. I said, and these teenagers, they're new with driving a car. I said, they don't have a lot of experience yet. I want you to get behind experienced drivers. Do not get in, the, in a vehicle with your, your little school friends going to your second school. That's a no-no. I don't want it. I know you in 11th grade, whatever. No. No. He was like, okay, mom. That boy went and did the complete opposite, y'all. I almost lost my son. Not listening. You hear me? But the deliverance power was there. It was made available. And I had taught my children how to call on the name of the Lord. I told them whenever you get in trouble, call on Jesus. Because power will show up and deliver you. Well, my son, he got in a minivan with one of the students at for that belongs to the Voltec school, right? Remember, it's going to be all kinds of students in this minivan not getting on the Voltec bus. And they were going to get on, get in this minivan and go over to the second school. Listen, this little child who was driving hit a corner y'all that minivan flipped three times landed on the hood and so you know when it when it flipped and land on the hood my son said he was the only one in the in that van calling on the name of the lord he said jesus my son called out on the god because i taught him how to do that my son said that minivan flipped the second time he called on jesus again he said jesus Jesus called on Jesus' name. My son said that minivan flipped the third time, landed upside down on the hood. And you know, when it lands upside down on the hood, it starts smashing down, right? Couldn't nobody get out the minivan. They, the EMS, when they arrived, had to cut my son and all those students out of that darn minivan. So I'm on the phone, you know. I just dropped my son off at school, okay? I'm thinking everything's okay. Holy Ghost ain't said nothing to me. He ain't said not one thing to me. 
I'm on the phone talking to a good friend. Her name was Renee. And Renee started testifying, telling me about the goodness of God. And I had heard her testimonies before, but she just felt like praising God. And so I joined the praise. When she got finished praising God, I started sharing praises about, you know, what God has done for me and uh, done for my family, right? So we on the phone, y'all. We just talking about God, how good he is, right? My doorbell rang. I was like, hey, Renee. Um, let me call you back. Somebody at my door. Y'all, I go to the door. My son, who I just dropped off at school not too long ago, is in my front door. I'm thinking to myself, what the heck? He got a key. Why is he ringing my doorbell? Listen, that boy, he stepped off the steps when he saw me come to the front door. And I was like, why are you? What is going on? And he going to start the conversation like this, talking about, Mom, I'm all right. I'm like, you all right? What are you talking about now? So I step out on the porch, and he steps off the steps, and he take a couple steps backwards because he already know I am. I'm going to flip, right? And so he told me the whole story a couple feet away from me because he know I was about to flip. He said, Ma, I know you told me to get on the Votec bus, but that's not what I did. And he told me the whole story, two feet away from me. Y'all, I felt like I was in slow motion. God just warned that boy. I said, come on in the house. He came on in the house. All I wanted to do at that point in time, I just wanted to feel his heart beating. So... I told him to take his chest and just put his heart, his chest up against my chest. I, all I wanted to do was just feel my son's heartbeat. I just wanted to feel him living, breathing, you know. And then once I went through that, I just balled my fist up. And then I just started sucking him. I just started hitting him. He was like, Mom, I'm sore. He was like, Mom. I was like, Boy, don't you understand that you don't have a regular mother you got a mother who walks with God, and when I give you a warning, you're to take heed to it. I said, I could have I could have been planning a funeral. Carl, why would you do that to me? You know what I'm saying? And from that point on, my son started paying attention to me. So, like, if I, you know, like, he didn't, like, just, like, sh you know, brush stuff off that I was saying to him he's like okay she's saying this for a reason let me take heed you know what I'm saying and um yeah he he pays attention to me all my children do when I start talking to him talking to him about stuff and saying stuff to him they be like okay okay God we hear you God we know you talking through mom we know you are you know what I'm saying and they uh they know now um you know the deliverance power of God is available to anybody who believes, you know? And uh, through the warnings comes protection, you know? And because I was testifying and praising my God, God was delivering my son from death. Oh, yes, he was. I have so many stories, y'all. I mean, so many stories of how my God has warned me and protected me. Yes, he has. He's a good God. How can you not serve a God like that? I do encourage um, everyone that's a believer in Christ Jesus, pay attention to the warnings of God. Um, if I'm in your life any kind of way, whether it be personal or um, through social media, um, however God places me in your life, pay attention to me when I'm talking to you. Don't don't be arrogant. Don't 
uh, belittle the gift that's inside of me. Um, don't think that uh, I'm making stuff up on my own because I don't. I it, It's all about obeying God and uh, uh, doing what God has uh, asked me to do and, and then helping people, you know. There are things going on and taking place in the earth right now that, y'all, it's just wicked. People doing stuff that's just so harmful and so vicious and vile and wicked. And I'm only one person. I'm only one person. But I do the best that I can with uh, helping people and uh, warning people. And uh, all I could do is send the warning. I can't make people obey God. I can't make people understand that I'm an old school prophet. Like, I might not dress old school. Meaning, you know, I might be a little trendy, you know, have the, uh, like, my cap on and my locks and my, my jacket and my leather and all of that. Um, be a little trendy. But on the inside, I'm an old school prophet. Remember, remember how God used the old school prophets? He would send the old school prophets to people to speak a word of deliverance. That's how God uses me. Whether it's uh, words of deliverance in the workplace, words of deliverance in my neighborhood, words of deliverance on social media, words of deliverance uh, through my company, through my books, through my movie, whatever it is I'm doing or touching or assigned to do, you better believe it's going to be words of deliverance combined with warnings, combined with instructions, combined with how to win with God. Yeah, so, you know, I wanted to make sure that I, you know, stop by and uh, share this, you know, uh, information with you because you need to know how to pay attention to the warnings of God. He'll warn you not to be with a man. He'll warn you not to be with people who really are, they really don't care about you or they're just, you know, uh, being vicious uh, to you some kind of way. Um, you know, God will, he'll give you warnings um, of people and he'll show you the wickedness of their heart. Yes, he will. He'll show you the wickedness of people. And, you know, when God tells you to separate or pull away or don't go over their house or, you know, whatever it is that God is saying to you, you need to make sure that you obey and that you do what God has called you to do. That's how you stay out of traps. You know, Satan is always setting up traps. And so um, I'm used to it. I've been walking with God for so long. I, I can see a trap 10,000 miles away. God will show it to me. And so, you know, I'll navigate around the trap because God showed it to me. Um, when it came to like... Uh, everything that went took that went down with that plague, God navigated me around all of that nonsense. He navigated me around all that foolishness. I had a warning from God two years before all that nonsense happened. Okay. Now, when God gives me a warning like he did today, he didn't give me a timeline. He just said, you know, tell my people um, to keep their heart pure. So they can have that covenant of protection. You know, make sure you're in alignment with God. Don't, don't be out here wilding out, not living right. Because when stuff start happening in the earth, y'all, I can definitely tell you that it's going to be some more sicknesses. It's going to be some more sicknesses and diseases that uh, hit the earth. And so, uh, you know, I've already told, share information with y'all about that. You can go out to my Rumble page at gold t lowercase g o l d t e e t h and learn how to take proper care um of your body okay learn how to you know eat right clean it out how to rest because your body has to be strong to handle all the wickedness that's uh being introduced 
uh, to the world. Okay? Got to be careful about what I'm saying, you know. So, uh, just, you know, uh, be aware um, of that. And so, you have to, like, navigate uh, through life. You have to navigate through life with God. You can't navigate on your own uh, intelligence or what other people that you think are so smart are saying because if they're not walking with God, it's not it's not gonna be the truth. And you're gonna fall into a trap. Okay. So this is uh Prophetess Nurse Lois uh coming to you from the Lois Banks Ministry. I'm trying to figure out if there are any other warnings. Hmm that I have gone through that might be a blessing to the hearer that would um you know protect you you know you some kind of way so you'll learn to uh you gotta learn to listen um to God. Um I, I talked about warnings about driving down the street. I remember years ago being in church and a man of God was telling us, you know, sometimes God will tell you to take a different route home. Like, to switch it up and change it up because Satan is planning something. Okay? Waiting on you to get to a certain spot to take you out. So, you have to listen to God for that as well. Um, and the pastor, the man of God, was saying that God had told this one man not to go down this specific street anymore. So the man obeyed God, did what he was supposed to do, didn't go down that street anymore until one day he said, well, shoot, ain't nothing happened. I'm just going to go down the street anyway. That, that disobedience cost that man his life. That man went down that street. A horrible accident happened. That man died, y'all. When God tell you not to do something, don't do it. There's a reason. Okay? He, he wants, he's protecting you. And you're going to have to uh, listen to God and do what he says. So, this is uh, Prophetess uh, Nurse Lois coming to you uh, from the Lois Banks Ministry. You have a real walk with God. It's very authentic. It's very real. I feel very loved by God. Um, his protection, uh, to me and my family is very evident and, um, tangible and, uh, consistent, you know, God is good. You know, he, uh, you know, again, when you're, you know, you're walking with God, you, you're doing everything in your power to walk up right before him. You have a covenant with your father in heaven don't forget that covenant so whatever takes place in your life whatever takes place uh in the world uh nothing can break that covenant of protection all you have to do is follow the instructions of god when he warns you about something it could be a feeling like i had in my spirit when i walked past the window it was a feeling like danger that's danger by that window he didn't speak words. It was a feeling of danger, and I knew something was going on with that window. It could be um, a vision um, or a dream. Um, it could be God speaking to you in an audible voice. Um, it could be whatever type of warning God wants to send to you. I told you, I told y'all before how God used my youngest daughter, the prophet, to give me a warning that somebody was going to try to come to my side of my house and do harm to me they were coming with fierce anger i mean whoever this was they was full of the devil you hear me i was waiting on them i was waiting on them right there i was waiting on them you might come in but you might not come out okay and so uh when they came to that side i let them know i was right there by the door they left they didn't come back I was waiting on them because God told me what door they were going to come to. I took heed to God's warning. I didn't blow it off. 
Okay? I did what God told Lois to do. So that's another warning. You know, you know, some Satan was, you know, Satan comes, he comes to do what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. That's what he come to do. But God, my father, was right there protecting me. So this is Prophetess Nurse Lois uh, coming to you from the uh, Lois Banks Ministry. God bless you.